to give thanks to him one more time. Let's thank him for the testimonies. Let's go ahead and give thanks to him for all that he's done. Thank him because no one is like him. Give thanks to him. Is worthy. Blessed be God forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we are giving thanks. Heavenly Father, in this fourth service, the last for today, we ask that each one have a word to go home with. A word of transformation. A word of blessing. Let each one have an encounter with your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, speak us to your word. Let each and every one of us have an encounter with your word. Let your word transform us. Let your word change us. Let it take us to another level of grace. In Jesus' mighty name. Give him a hand. You may be seated. And you know what God said? He said, if he gave you Jesus free of charge, he will give you all things. Romans 8, verse 32. He said, if he spared not his own son, but delivered him all for us all, I shall not with him freely give us. How many things? Say, so if you gave me Jesus, you will give me all things. Say it one more time. Say it like a child of God. Whatever I'm looking for, I'll get in the service. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Now, there is a special anointing service. And we'll be taking a charge for about 10, 15 minutes. And then we take the anointing section. We have two sections. First, we'll take a charge. And then we'll go to the anointing to end for the day. Glory to God. Life is an adventure. 
To succeed is not a matter of destination, but an adventure. And success is a function of choices. You either choose to succeed or you choose to fail. How do people choose to fail? By not doing what it takes to be successful. There is no accidental success. And there's no accidental failure. Everyone that failed, failed in the laws of success. You can't, to fail in school, just stop reading, you fail. Even they are the most brilliant. To fail in business, just not be diligent, you fail. Every failure is a law that has been broken. Nobody fails by accident, I repeat, nobody succeeds by accident. The year 2023 is coming to an end and the year 2024 is about to open. If I really have to succeed next year, then I must have a detailed plan for next year. A white man said, if you fail to plan, you are planned to fail. Planning is simply the arrangement of actions necessary to achieve your desired goal. It is having a mental picture of your future that you bring it to accomplishment. Planning is the key to success. Many want to succeed but have no plan. And without planning, they take actions so they fail at the end. You will not fail. If you want to go far in life, then you must plan from this moment. There is no future of a man who does not have a plan. In planning, you think, you meditate, then you put to action the things you have done. In Luke 14, 28, the scripture says, which of you intending to build a tower, seated not down first and counted the cost, where they have sufficient to finish it. Every man receives successful and lasting success is a planner. Is it what? And in planning, thinking is the principal too. What is the principal too? Thinking. God speaking said, come, let us reason together. Isaiah 1, 18. God wants you to reason with him so you can come out of the prisons of life. Because planning, not just good reasoning, eliminates struggles, terminates frustration, and guarantees success. You'll be successful. The prodigal son in Luke 15, 17, 18, he planned his way that metamorphosed from one state to another. He said, what am I doing here? I will arise and go to my father. His planning metamorphosed into action. His action gave him his dignity back. Your dignity will be restored. Amen. The year is rolling out. We are getting into a new year. You can't pray 2023 back again. It must pass. So you have to do something for 2024. We're looking at tips for effective planning. And I said in the first service, first tip I said is have a great picture of the future. That's for first service number one. Number two, I said go for relevant information. I did that in the second service. Thus, I said, write down your plan for the future, number three. And number four, associate with the wise. Associate what? If you want your plan to work. In Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine, it said two are better than one because they have a good reward of their labor. Two are better than what? Proverbs 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, their safety. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The kind of company you keep determines how far you go. Let me caution you, as brothers and sisters, beware of friends that will lure you into wonder spending this season. Don't go haywire in your spending. Separate yourself from friends that waste your time, resources, and energy. 
Whoever wastes your time does not respect your assignment. Mike Mudok said. Anybody that does not respect your time, you hear me? I'm telling you, does not respect your assignment. So avoid those who waste your time, waste your resources, and waste your energy. Have you met some people after they leave you, you are drained? It's as if you carried 50 bags of cement. Just staying around you, they talk you to a point you are just exhausted. Every time they come around you, you regret they came. Have you ever experienced that before? They will tell you all the barriers in the village. They will give you a diary of everybody who died. Then when they want to go, they drain you. They say, find me something. They never add to your life. They subtract from you. Plan your life this time. If you don't plan, you look for who to blame. And Satan is not our problem. Many are planning for this festive season to buy clothes, travel and enjoy their lives, which is not bad. Very good. But have you planned for next year? And have you planned for the future? Answer yourself. The answer to this simple question will determine your fulfillment. Ask yourself, how many of you have planned for next year? <laughs> Thank God you are truthful. I thought you would raise your hand. Many have not planned for next year. Remember you pay school fees. <laughs> Remember you pay house rent. Remember, don't just go for Christmas for one day and forget that house rent will be paid. You won't bind your landlord in January. You won't bind your school teachers and headmasters and principals next year. So if you want to bind the vice chancellors of universities, so bind this man. You won't bind. Some pray even school should go on strike. So they won't pay school fees. They will not go on strike. I lose anyone you want to bind because you pay them. If they say amen or Lord, you won't bind any landlord. Poor planning. Prayer is not a substitute for planning. Don't pray for what you plan. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Take your time. Every time you're under pressure, it's lack of planning. Every time, can I tell you something? Borrowing is a sign of lack of planning. I've never borrowed as a pastor. I've never owed as a pastor. Intentionally, I live my size. I live what? My size. I don't try to live above my size. I don't want to impress people and depress myself. Because borrowing is simply trying to impress somebody who does not even like you. What you're wearing today, you wear it tomorrow. So why rush today? Borrowing is stripping your future just to affect today. You are emptying the future to affect what? Today. So wait for the future to come. Because when you borrow, you are emptying the future that you're supposed to get into today and then tomorrow becomes empty. Don't borrow. Is it a sin? No. But it's a wait. It's not a sin. Tobolo is not a sin. But it's a wait. It's a what? You may have an IBP because of borrowing. Most people have blood pressure, not the devil. It's, it's all borrowing. When they knock their door, their heart will fly. Fiam. And then you start making trouble. Except you are in Lagos. In Lagos, borrowing is not anything. And I said in Lagos as a young man for years. To borrow in Lagos is normal. In fact, if you don't borrow, you're abnormal. The Western world, borrowing is normal. They say, boy, you don't have, are you not qualified for credit? Collect it. When you go to a bank, they'll tell you, they were advising me to borrow. I say, if I borrow, will you give me interest? He said, no, you pay back. I said, no, why are you telling me to borrow? He said, that's well, you, you say your credit facility will increase. The man, when I finish, started laughing. I said, don't borrow. Don't borrow yourself. They will advise you to borrow. So you borrow car. You pay, you're indebted in car, you're indebted in house, indebted in, even, even television, they've not paid some people. And it has entered the, this part of the world also. You buy higher purchase, higher purchase, higher purchase. It may be for you to marry your wife for higher purchase. <laughs> Everything is higher. Car you're driving, you have not paid. Clothes you're wearing, you have not paid. Eh? Everything, borrow, 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 borrow. Hmm. Take time. Oh. So you put yourself under 
pressure. It's not necessary. Calm down. Life is in phases, men are in sizes. When the time comes, the thing you're borrowing to wear today, you can wear it tomorrow. Don't stress yourself. Hmm? The wig you're wearing today that you want to borrow, there's a size for you. If the 5,000 one is one for you, wear the 5,000. If 10,000 is one for you, better, don't go and borrow 500,000 to wear a wig. When your salary is 200,000, when will you finish paying the wig alone? That alone can make you not to pay tight anymore. Hmm? Shoe is shoe. I got, they gave me one white shoe, I gave it to one of my staff, he was very happy. They put MK on the shoe, but I know it's not MK. The MK is, is like KM. <laughs> MK, you know what MK now? Michael Kors. This one is, this one is Michael, I curse you. <laughs> <laughs> if you see the white shoe, the M, they put it on like this. I said, this is our, our brothers will kill us. <laughs> the MK, very big. And the person gave it to me. I said, thank God, God, God bless them, but I don't wear them. <laughs> but that's the size. That's what? If you bring it out, you, the, you know, this gum order is strong. You know, it's not that kind of 5,000 white. But it's white shoe. White is white. White is... So if the person wants to wear white shoe, you wear that one. Even if you do touch, it will be God will see inside the person. <laughs> now you say, no, I, I won't wear that one. I'm going to wear LV. LV2 has LVO. VL in Nigeria. They have VL. <laughs> they write the L up, V down. <laughs> <laughs> One of the boys in the house, I said, if they catch you in Paris with this shoe, you, they will jail you. <laughs> and when he's moving this, I don't see move like this. With the LV shoe, you will be moving like this. I said, if they catch you with this shoe, this shoe. <laughs> he said, Papa, don't mind this one. No. This one, this one, no, but the LV. That's how much you do, but he said, I think 4,005. <laughs> and when, if the, when rain falls, it's when you know that it's, it's LV through, through. When rain falls, you see the under will just go like this. It will soak, soak. You think you're carrying boot. <laughs> you wait. What's your business? My friend, just live your life. Don't give yourself stress. Just plan your life. Everybody plan what? If believers will plan, God will take us from one phase to another. We want to put ourselves under pressure. We want to live like the world. No, it's not necessary. Nobody's competing with you. I'm not competing with anybody. If you, nothing. Yesterday we, we flew by economy. It doesn't change where I am. I'm still David to be If like fly for first class, when I come down, the whole world will run after me. They will leave you with your first class. I've launched long ago. I went to... The biggest hotel then in Port Harcourt, I told my wife the story, and some heavy weights were there in quotes. I've not even reached this level of life. I drove myself, then I was not at this level. I drove myself with one Ain Day, this asset, the small Ain Day. I parked by the hotel, and some heavy weights with siren police were there. The moment I came down, the whole journalist ran to me. I said, Look at the great people, and I asked them, I said, No, it's you who want to talk to. Your voice is more stronger than these people. They came with big cars, but my voice was stronger. Personality is not what you wear. It's what is inside of you. With all humility, there's no way I will stand in this nation that somebody will just look at me and pass. Are you going to say now? So, why am I competing? Whether I wear short, I'm where I am. If I wear silk pass, I'm still the same person. Please stop killing yourself. Plan your life. Don't give yourself stress. Don't this festive period live your life. <laughs> borrow money to wear clothes? No, no, you don't need it. Don't borrow money to wear clothes. Live your size. Eat your size. Wear your size. Live your size. Eat your size. Wear your size. If you like, you're here. <laughs> but I know now, I know I've been here for some time. By January, you see people worry people. So the school fees for my children. Some people you make there, they don't even come to church again because you worry them to a point that they start dodging church. They didn't come to church because of you. You now start sleeping notes in your hands. My children's school fees. God will bless you. He bless those who give. You know all those scriptures you are begging.
I have never begged any mortal man since I became born again. I avoid, I hate begging. You know why? Begging is one kind. You know, one kind. Have you ever begged people and then they didn't give you? <laughs> you feel like they pour you water. At me, I hate it. After I tell somebody, you tell somebody all of your problem. May you not mean politicians? They will look at you. They say, "Okay, okay. Oh, if you had, if you had come yesterday, it's a lie. It's, then they will not call his friend. You know, yesterday, you know, you remember that my friend when he came, I gave him ten million. Ten million. Don't you know? Then the friend will say, "Yes, yes, 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 ten million." Say, if you, then you will say, "Hey, why not call yesterday?" It's a lie. <laughs> You see, no, if you had come yesterday, what is five million? Five million. I gave somebody ten million yesterday. They would talk to you. I think whether I true or not, you know, lying is part of politics. Politics, you must lie. Whether church or not, if you don't lie, no, if you enter politics, you go lie. It's all over the world, though, not Nigeria. Part of the credentials to be a politician is lying. You go lie, you know, go feed, you go lie. They say, we'll put AC in the atmosphere. Someone say, yes, put him, put him, yeah. You go put AC. Where you go put this in atmosphere? And <laughs> yeah, when you go to <laughs> if one day truthful, that arena, eh? No only God will save you, that arena. That's why church people go to politics and say, hey, church man, the deal go lie small. When it lies small, you must, you must lie. It, it's a global problem. You go lie small, lie, put inside. True today, truthful. <laughs> <laughs> I go I go take triple now, take with the election. <laughs> you go tell somebody what you know what you do now. I'll give all of you, all of you, all of you, all of you, no suffering in this town. Are you God? No suffering. <laughs> and you, your beloved was really saying go give all of us. There's <laughs> no more man can solve everybody's problem. But that's by the way. So calm down though. If you just live your life, please buy the things you can buy. The ones you cannot buy, leave them for this Christmas time. Don't use 25th, only one day advanced celebration. Kill yourself. Remember next year they come by January, so you're not going to pray. They bind the devil. We're not the devil. We believe God more in January. Most people believe God. So I believe God for, for her strength. Don't believe God. Plan to pay her strength. Don't believe God for school fees. Pay school fees. Have you had something? If you write and say, Father, I receive grace to plan. I don't want to put myself under pressure. In Jesus' name. Well, right, let's go to the anointing section with a worship song and then we'll go to the anointing section. Hallelujah. Let a son of God unfold you with his spirit and his love. Let him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let him have the things that hold you. And his spirit, like a dove, will descend upon your life and make you whole.
like a dove will descend upon your life and be Father, this session, breathe upon the word. The anointing of the Holy Ghost will walk in everyone's life. The yoke shall be broken. The captive shall be set free. The sick will be healed. The oppressed will be rescued. And everyone will be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. You may be seated. In Job chapter 5 and verse 20, it says, Family, it shall redeem thee from dead, and a wall from the power of the sword. To the truth says, At destruction and famine thou shalt love. I decree, no matter what is happening in the world, you will be smiling in the name of Jesus. It will not affect you. It says, Brought me up also out of an horrible pit. Everyone reach out my voice inside any kind of pit. By the power of the Holy Ghost, Psalm 40 verse 2, that's what I'm reading, you will come out right now. Yeah. That amen does not show faith. Yeah. It's out of the merry clay and set my feet upon a rock. I command you to be established right now. Yeah. You see, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness upon the face of the deep. I'm reading Genesis chapter 1, 1 to 3. And darkness upon the face of the deep. Darkness covered the entire creation. He said the earth was without form or void. That means the earth was chaotic, formless. No beauty to behold. And all of a sudden the spirit of God began to move upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. That light was not sun. That light was the glory. I don't know what darkness has covered your destiny. I command you to roll the way right now. Yeah. What about darkness that covered your destiny? If darkness covers a shop, nobody will enter that shop. People will be seeing it, but they will not be able to physically to be there, but they won't see. They will be passing. If darkness should cover even a church, people will not enter that church. And Satan is the master of darkness. Now anywhere he has placed darkness on anyone's destiny, any business, I command that darkness roll over the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. In the third service, God gave me a vivid illustration where I took a cloth and covered the man. And he said, that's how the devil covers people. And when I removed it, the power of God could not, the young man could not even stand with the person holding him. Now, that's how it is. When Satan covers with darkness, even if you're a young lady to marry, nobody will see you. And if you go for business, they'll give everybody when it comes to you, they won't give you. Anywhere darkness has sat on your destiny, I command that darkness roll the way in the name of Jesus. Not tomorrow, right now. Not tomorrow, right now. And then God said, let there be light. I speak on your destiny, the glory upon your life. And after glory came, God said, and God blessed them. When he said them, you were inclusive. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Why meditating for this service? He gave me a deep scripture. He said, use this scripture. Even if it was only scripture, I use everybody who says scripture. The Holy Spirit is one spirit. He was one at Genesis where I read. In 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17. He said, now. The Lord is our spirit. <laughs> now. Say with me now. No. Not after. Say now. No. He said, and this, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He's not just quoting his rhema. Where? He is. Is he where you are? He said, Lord, I'm with you. Is he where you are? Yes. Do you believe he's with you? Yes. If you're watching online, do you believe he's with you? Yes. Now I command. Say with me, Holy Spirit. Yes. You said in your word. That where you are, there's liberty right now. Concerning my life and all my fears, your power bring liberty right now. Now let me demonstrate. I want a young man who is going through hardship to come. Somebody, are you, you're going through hardship? You're not faithful and tight. You're not. 
Go back. You're an old member. I hear God. Go back. That's why he said that you should be. I want someone who's faithful and tired, but things are tough. Bring me a cloth. It's not just go praying for somebody. No. Is it medicated or just for a guy? For a guy. <laughs> How long have you been in this church? Since the hand, was it? You stammer? Four years now. You stammer? Yes, you stammer. You know, not anger. You don't, I don't talk with that. Do you stammer? Yes, sir. Put your hand on your tongue. Put your hand on your tongue. I command the stammering tongue to cease. Yes. From this man, stammer no more in Jesus' name. Yes. Speak perfectly. Yes. Remove your hand. What's your name? Lucky as well. Get up, don't hold me. I'm not the one who healed you. <laughs> you have a little one? Are you from a little one? I'm from Uber State. A little one? No, 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 I'm from Obele. Obele. Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, Brahma. Oh, we? I'm Mecca. Dearly. Now, this is how Satan covers people with darkness. It covers you like this. You two just stand. You don't need to, even if I don't cover you. This is Genesis chapter 1. This young man was created for glory, but Satan comes to cover him. There's nothing. No, can you recognize him now? So even if good thing wants to come, nobody will see him. Even if he wants to go for good thing, he can't see the road. Satan has covered him. This is how Satan does. Nothing good comes to this man. He, nothing, he too cannot see anything good. And darkness has covered him. And the Spirit of God began to move. This is what the Spirit of God does. It's what God just go like this. In Jesus' name. Wherever darkness has covered you in the name of Jesus, the Spirit of God removed that darkness from you. Anywhere darkness has sat on your destiny, I command you to roll the way right now. Now the glory of God come upon what darkness has left in the name of Jesus. If you are a believer, say amen like a believer. The glory of God rests upon you in the name of Jesus. The glory of God rests upon all that concerns in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen like a believer. Look at someone and say to the person, God has blessed me. In the name of Jesus, Amen. your liberty is now. Amen. It's an after David was anointed, the spirit of God came out upon him from that day forward. That oil seems to be an ordinary oil. Amen. The spirit of God come upon that oil in the name of Jesus. Amen. After he was anointed, he brought down Goliath. Everything challenging your life will be brought down now. Amen. After the anointing, Goliath came down flat. He took the sword from Goliath and killed him. The same thing they want to use to kill you, you used to kill them. In the name of Jesus, I declare and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, you anointed this hour to bring every Goliath down. I speak with authority. The one who called me, his name is Jesus. He's one backing the statements I make, not myself. And I declare your liberty to be now. I don't care how long you have suffered. If you can follow me by the leading of the Holy Ghost. Even if you are bonded at the 50 years. You are free right now. You are free right now. Now listen. I hear God as my youngest friend. I wish you can see what I see. I don't care how many years you have gone through your hardship. This day you are liberty is established. This day your freedom is established. In the name of Jesus. The chains are broken. The captivity is torn. Your story will change. Your tears are wiped off. You are free right now. In the name of Jesus. The amen will confirm a testimony in your life. So where the spirit of the Lord is, there is. I'm free. Say it. Say it. Say it. 
you are from today, you are free to enjoy your redemptive benefits. In First Samuel chapter 10, 1 to 4, 6 to 7, 11, 9, and so on. He said, Samuel took a veil of oil and anointed him and said, The Lord has made you captain of his inheritance. Now I decree. Where you were a captive, go back there as a captain. He said, when that departed from me today, not tomorrow. He said, two men, by the church of they will say to you, the asses with that winter to seek are found. Whatever you have lost, you will recover it today. <laughs> Somebody who messes up will flow right in the service. <laughs> I hear God, oh, somebody who your mercy ceased right in this service, you, it will flow. <laughs> God will restore your honor and dignity. No matter how long that dignity was eroded from you, it will be restored. Amen. Then shall that go on forward. I decree progress from now. Amen. Every form of retrogression has ended in your life. Amen. He said they will give you two loaves. May you begin to enjoy favor. Amen. They will salute you. Amen. I decree from today, anywhere you go, you enter with dignity. You will not go to any nation and not be welcomed. Amen. You will not enter any office and not be welcomed. Amen. Even from this moment, you will be welcomed. Amen. As I'm speaking it, they will remember you for good. Amen. The louder your amen, you have favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I hear God say to me now, every delay has ended. Everything that delay your blessing has ended. Amen. That thing that delay your marriage, your favor, your blessing, your fruitfulness, your admission to school, whatever delayed your promotion, that delay has ended. Amen. That thing that it was delayed, it has ended. Amen. God will give you speed in the name of Jesus. He said, and it shall be turned into another man. God will turn you to a celebrity. Amen. He went as nobody, and as a celebrity. He will turn you to another man. Where you go for employment, they'll make you a manager. Amen. Where you're looking for smart, they'll give you big things. God will change your status after this meeting. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He said, do as occasion serve. Oh, Marie Brady, I could sound could tell everybody. Everywhere you turn, it will be evident that you are a man anointed for favor. You are a woman anointed for favor. Then it was asked, Is Saul also among the prophets? Your name will be called for something good. From the, now, listen, it's a king shall send for thee. After the anointing, kings will send for you. From different parts of the world, where you have never traveled, your name will be heard. In the name of Jesus. And he gave him another heart. May the heart to serve God become your portion. And all these signs came to pass that day. Every time I'm speaking now and I will speak, all will come to pass in our lives. But every man blessed of God is an envy of hell. Hell does not like blessed people, so I'm not ignorant. He said this word in Psalm 89, 20 to 23. He said, I have found David my servant with my holy oil, I have anointed him. With whom my hand shall be established. My arm shall also stand him. The enemy shall not exalt upon him, not the sort of wickedness after him. Nobody trouble any of us anymore. <laughs> I'll beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. Whoever says I hate you will be plagued instantly. <laughs> God, we beat down our enemies in the name of Jesus. If you are the one, your amen will confirm it. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of God shall lift up a standard against him. As I have 9 verse 19, may the Holy Ghost be a seal over your lives. 
He said, he has brought me and you into a wealthy place. Psalm 66, verse 12. May you enter your own wealthy place. He said, I shall go before you are made to create a place stage. I bring the gates of black and the bars of iron. Every door that was shut, be open in the name of Jesus. Now I shall bring the hidden riches. Whatever was hidden belong as I have 45, 1 to 3. Every blessing hidden down, down will be brought to light now. Amen. It will be delivered into your hands in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary. I decree miracle conceptions. Amen. Miracle marriages. Amen. Miracle blessings. Amen. To everyone sick, I pronounce you healed. Amen. Finally hear this. When the children of Israel were in Egypt, <laughs> what happened to the Egyptians has never happened to the children of Israel. They did not suffer what the Egyptians suffered. We are redeemed to enjoy divine exemption. By covenant, you are not supposed to suffer what unbelievers suffer. He said, I'm the Lord, I change nothing. I decree the stench and decadence in the society globally, making people not to improve, not to progress. You will be exempted. I'm reading Exodus chapter 8, verse 22. It implies stench. What makes people to smell? Smell does not mean physical smell. You go somewhere to say, go, 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 the country hard, country hard. You, they will never say that to you. <laughs> Every form of economic recession, captives were dying in Egypt. Exodus chapter 9, 3 to 6, in verse 4, verse 6. Their businesses could not collapse or business. Business are closing all over the world. Business are closing all over the world, but your own business will not close. <laughs> your career will not crash. <laughs> if you look at there was tragic occurrence in Exodus 9, verse 26. Only in Goshen, there was no hail. Hail means flood, losses, destruction of properties, fire, disaster, all those kinds of things. hail. No matter where you are, I say, it shall not come near thee. I decree no plague in the world will come near your house. Armed robbers will not see your own door. In the name of Jesus, you shall enjoy peace. And all around preservation. I go to first Kings 5 4. Finally, say with me, no more hardship. No say it like a child of God. No say it that minute. No now, if you read, he said hardship became endemic due to financial bankruptcy. There was financial what? Bankruptcy in Egypt. But in Goshen, there was so much money. They never suffered any hardship. Rather, they lived in supernatural abundance. Genesis 47 15 and 27. And when money failed, so money failure is not new. It's not what? In the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money failed. Money has been failing, so don't bother yourself praying, Oh God, oh God, just tell God to exempt you. Look at 27. And Israel dwelt in the land of where? Is it the same place where money failed? The same place? That you're in a country where things are not working, does not mean it will be affected. In the country, what? Goshen was a city. There's a way you'll be blessed. They call your place country. If you want, they say Canaan land, redemption camp, they are countries. They don't call them, like, they are, those places are what? There's a way you'll be blessed that that blessing will show. Are you, have you ever gone to Italy? Italy is once tiny line that divide Vatican and Milan. It's just white, white road. If you cross the white, white line, you're in Vatican. If you're here, you're in Milan. The Vatican you're hearing is, a small, is a just a small place, but that place is ruling the whole world from there. The laws of the world don't affect Vatican. One small place. They just use white, you see white line. If you're here, you're in Milan. If you're here, you're in Vatican. <laughs> so if you if you cross here in yeah, Vatican, it's yeah, just white line. The same country, but they are not, not covered by the same economy. The economies are different. The Vatican economy is different from the Vatican, uh, economy of Italy. Now, to the children of God, you are like that. You are in the same country, but you are not of the same effect. And Israel dwell in the land of where? In the country of Goshen. And they had what? No possession of the plural. They had and grew and multiplied excellently. If the natural Israelites can have this, we are spiritual Jews. 
and by covenant we are superior to this one. If God can do that for them, do you believe the word of God? Now I decree. What the world is going through, you will not go through it. What they are suffering, you will not suffer it. I speak prophetically. This shall be your season of abundance. If you believe in Sam, he said, When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, I command your lifting to start in the name of Jesus. I say, When people start, they say, It shall save the humble person. That means it takes humility to agree with this truth. Job 22, 27, 29. You know, if you are not humble, you won't agree with this kind of truth. I said, Forget all these preachers, they're talking rubbish. He says, shall say what? It takes humility. Proud people who agree, they say, forget this pastor. I read the economics. I made first class economics. How can he say that you won't suffer in this time when the whole world is going through? You know, you, you, you know more than God. Any boys call it a kachama? Somebody who knows everything. You know everything. Please, at this point, be like a baby. If you tell a baby, I'll buy you a plane, the baby will be laughing. Mommy said that she'll buy me a plane. Behave like a baby. Just believe God and leave this other things to God. How you will do it is not your business. God who could put money in the mouth of a fish. Is it what you have to ask question? He put money in the mouth of what? Did they back inside fish? So don't ask God, God, how are you going to make me when things are not working? No, I speak over your life. This shall be your best season. This shall be your best season. This season shall be your best season. Amen. You will not suffer while the world is suffering. Amen. You will have more than enough in the name of Jesus. Amen. Abundance wherever you go. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So all that has been declared must come to pass. In my life. No evil is permitted to touch me. Now in the name of Jesus, you are going to pray. You ask the Holy Spirit to crown your year with goodness and cause your path to drop with fat. Psalm 65 verse 11. He said, Lord, crown this year with your goodness the many days and beyond. And then draw my path. And every word spoken must come to pass. Take it on your hand. I say, in the name of Jesus, I believe in the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The same Holy Spirit is upon this oil as I am anointed. I declare I will end this year well. The God will crown my year with his goodness and my path. Shadow of fatness. And according to First Samuel chapter 10, verse 9. All that was spoken came to pass that same day. So all that have been declared from first service to this first service must come to pass in my favor right now. Not one word will fail in the name of of Jesus. Go ahead, anoint yourself and pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray for yourself in the name of Jesus.
in Jesus mighty name now listen in Matthew 33 verse 11 Matthew 3 11 and 12 is I indeed baptized you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, which is I'm not ready to bear. He shall baptize with the Holy, Holy Ghost and with what? So is a liquid fire. Look at verse 12. Whose fan is in his hand, and will truly purge his floor, and gather his wheat to his gunner, but he will burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. That means inside you will sweep off anything that God has not planted. Is that true? The spiritual vacuum, what? Cleaner. So you will clean your system. Of every sickness. Do you believe? Yes, sir. Everyone that has any eternal organ sickness. Whether you know or not. In case it has not come out including cancer. The Holy Spirit in this oil will clear that evil. Yes, no matter the disease. He will sweep it and you push it out of your system. In the name of Jesus. Yes. But the Holy Ghost also has a part. It shall quicken your mortal body. So by this one, in case there be any part of you that is weak, kidneys everywhere, it shall quicken it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Two things he will do. He will clean it and quicken you. Amen. Now for your total health, take a shot in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and give thanks to God. Say I'm free. I'm free. Say it one more time, I'm free. I'm free. From every disease. And from every plague. In the name of Jesus. How many of you God has blessed you? Give thanks to God if you believe he has blessed you. Go ahead and thank him. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. In the name of Jesus. When you get home, anoint your houses. Are you hearing me now? Anoint your doors. But if it's not your house, don't go to the gate to... Uh, in case, <laughs> anoint your own door. Anoint your own. Don't go to another man's house and be anointing the house. Before the man think that you are doing another thing. Are you understand? But there's a wise way we anoint. Just put it on your forehead. Just on your fingers. If you touch the door, it has touched. You don't need to pray. Just touch the door. As you're clutching the gate, say the power of the Holy Ghost enter this compound because of me. Life story, when we were plotted five, the old place of said church, one that was led, I just anointed the gate. An old woman who has another spirit. And when she crossed the gate, that was it. She couldn't. She started manifesting. I said, take, her, take mama out. She was coming from the other side. Are you answer now? A boy has come here. When I, I used to lay hands on people. Before I used to lay hands on people. So that's when church grew. I think I, I've told myself I'll go back to all the things I used to do. Because all these small boys. Before I do it constantly. Midnight. I, before everything, I was anointed before service. So I anointed. The boy came in. He couldn't put his leg on the ground. He said, the ground, there's fire on the ground. Fire, fire. The Lord told me they should take him out, otherwise he will die. He couldn't physically lift his legs on chair. He said, the ground is so too hot. They now asked him, he says, grandmother gave him something to come to church, to come and test power. Now I decree, the environments you anoint will be fire. Any evil person that tried to come to that compound, fire will burn them. If there be anyone who carry charm to the one cross, they will fall down there. Amen. No evil person can cross where you anoint in the name of Jesus. Amen. There'll be fire burning wherever you anoint. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So when you get home, anoint your gates. Anoint. I hear them now. If the oil is too small, put it on top, big one, because the same power is there. Just on the put over and they cross it on your gate. I've told you to do it in the churches. There'll be fire wherever you that oil is found. Amen. The favor, you told you the same prophetic word. Enter this, my family. Enter my house. You speak over your house. Is that true? In Jesus' name. Who? I'm getting a word. I will tell you details. I'll tell you in the course of the Week of Spirit Empowerment. I'll get clearance. He's speaking to me over something. If you don't come, Sunday, where you come, you hear it. But come with the same oil on Sunday for spiritual favor. Now hear this. It is not the oil that matters most. Your life and the relationship with Jesus. He said, repent and be baptized of the Holy Ghost. Repentance before the baptism of the Holy Spirit, before the anointing. 
If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then be born again. Give your life to Jesus. Give your life to who? To Jesus. And then you will be free from all these problems. Pray this prayer after me. Those of you who are not born again, say after me, Lord Jesus, I have come to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose to save me. With my mouth, I declare you. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. All that offer that prayers keep standing while others suggest this.